presents Nightfall. provide some answers for parents who are amazed at how often children seem to know what we've been thinking almost before we thought it. The play, a first for this series by Stephen Craigwood, is sweetly called Teddy. I know, I know. Quit being the big puss. But I don't get to see Teddy that often after all. Don't you think I'm a little too old to talk down to anymore? Look, I better get to dinner, Puss. Make sure you get Teddy home in a couple of hours. I don't want any ice cream. I want to go. Really? Well, you are working yourself up into a state. I don't see how you can expect Gordon to be the passionate husband if you need him in that kind of mood. You just tell him how you feel about being alone all the time. He now takes me on lots of his business. I'm well aware your husband is a paragon of virtue. No, that isn't what I'm talking about. I have some business to say. House presents Nightfall. Tonight's play may provide some answers for parents who are amazed at how often children seem to know what we've been thinking almost before we thought it. The play, a first for this series by Stephen Fraygood, is sweetly called Teddy. I know, I know. Quit being the big sister. But I don't get to see Teddy that often after all. Don't you think I'm a little too old to talk down to anymore? Look, I better get to dinner, Puss. Make sure you get Teddy home in a couple of hours. I don't want any ice cream. I want to go. Really? Well, you are working yourself up into a state. I don't see how you can expect Gordon to be a passionate husband if you need him in that kind of mood. I'll be old. Just tell him how you feel about being alone all the time. He now takes me on lots of his business. I'm well aware your husband is a paragon of virtue. No, that isn't what I'm talking about. I have some business to settle with Gordon. Oh, let the poor man have a rest for God's sake. Can we go now? I know you're my older sister, Beth, all wise and knowing and generally much too generous. But if you don't find my saying so, I will show you stuff Stupid my... little sister. Stupid little sister. Good Lord. Stop it. Stupid little sister. She called you. Then you don't make a scene. I have told you. I, I, I'm afraid I don't understand. I... Just leave us alone. Well, you're going to be that way. I am not a stupid little sister, damn it. I think I'd better get back to the hotel. What about Teddy? I'll telephone you from Winnipeg. Teddy? Teddy, why do you do it? There's nothing that gives me greater pleasure than coming home to a loving and affectionate woman. I suppose you think I should give you a hero's welcome. 
Ballard runs his damn department like a battle. Yeah, yeah. You win or lose this time. Yes, yes. All of all, let's check him out. Do you think it's been any fun for me at home? Teddy again. By the way, where is he? He's supposed to be with my sister this afternoon, but he scared the hell out of her. Well, you left him home alone? Where was I supposed to get a babysitter? Gordon, you have to do something. I have to keep our little family fed, darling. It's going to get a lot harder if I don't get the promotion. If you're at home more often, you'd know what I'm talking about. Look, Marge, it's just something he's going through, that's all. A lot of children go through funny periods. Ballard's got two kids, and he's... It's none that... of his business. Margie, it's not that serious. Wonderful. Tell everyone about us. Gordon, Teddy is supposed to go to school this fall. Haven't you thought about that? Good. It'll take a load off you and give him a chance to know some other kids. The other kids are afraid of him now. He's just a kid, for God's sake. I'm sending him to a doctor. That's ridiculous. He isn't sick. She's a psychiatrist. She only works with children. Look, why don't you just think about it, eh? I've had too much time to think about it, Gordon. Let's go out to dinner tonight. We'll get a babysitter. I just told you. We can't get anyone to stay with him anymore. Oh, the hell with it. Just give me a little peace, will you? Teddy? Oh, Daddy. I'm back. Well, uh, aren't you going to give me a hug? I'm too old to hug anymore. Oh, nobody's too old to hug. Mm. <laughs> hey, look here. I bought you a present. Thank you, Daddy. Well, uh, aren't you going to open it? Come on, here, I'll do it. What is it? What is it? Superman doll. You know, faster than a speeding bullet, leaps over tall buildings. Oh, yeah. Mommy says we're going to see the movie. You eat all your peas and carrots, and one day you'll be big and strong like Superman. I don't think I want to be like that. People are afraid of each other a lot, Daddy. You're afraid too, Daddy. You're afraid of me. You're afraid of Mommy. And you're afraid of the man with the red hair. How do you know about the man with the red hair? I'm sorry, Daddy. I just know about it, that's all. Oh, oh, Teddy, uh, don't look at me that way, son. I, I just just get mad because you, well, you say things that kind of scare people sometimes. What kind of things? Like about the man with the red hair. He's Frank Ballard, the guy I went to see in Ottawa. Well, you've never met him, Teddy. You, you don't know what he looks like. I hear all kinds of things all the time. There's so much noise. I... I'm, I'm not mad at well, you, son, but... I wish you wouldn't talk about things unless you, you really know about them. I don't talk to anybody except Mommy. Teddy, uh, you've seen me off at the airport lots of times. Mm-hmm. How would you like to ride in a real airplane? I'll be going back to Ottawa in a couple of weeks, and uh, for some reason the great Mr. Frank Ballard thinks he'd like to meet you. I... I don't know. You'd be doing Daddy a big favor. You might be able to help your old man land a job. Okay, Daddy. I want to make you happy. Sure you do, kid. Sure you do. And I'd like to make us all happy. Mm-hmm. Oh, Daddy, I'm with you, baby. certainly enjoyed our little talk. Now, do you mind waiting outside for a minute while I talk to your mother? Mm-hmm. That's a good boy. Doctor, you have to do something. About Teddy or your state of nerves? <laughs> it may surprise you, Mrs. Fraser, but what Teddy's going through isn't all that unusual. But mental telepathy? No. But Doctor, he... He's intelligent, sensitive, and you say he's alone a lot of the time. Now, kids that age are very perceptive, you know. A word here and there, a gesture, feelings around them. They can put together a pretty accurate picture of reality. 
Sometimes embarrassing, the architect. But didn't he tell you about... about the voices? We talked about a lot of things. But you have to remember this is only the first time we met. I gather you and your husband aren't getting along very well these days, hmm? I'm afraid Teddy's pretty upset about that. It's a difficult time for him. I try to do my best. <laughs> Don't worry, Mrs. Hill, but I'm not going to abandon you. Speak to my secretary and she'll fix you up with another appointment. Thank you, Dr. Rice. You don't know how much this means to me. Hello, Frank. Yes, this is Emma. I thought you'd like to know I picked up another one. Oh, I guess about class B. Possibly class A, meant to be ridiculous. At the age of five? Besides, there's the some uh, emotional complications. I, I think he's strong. Very strong. Yes. Teddy Fraser. I don't care if you do know his father. I think this is something you should leave to me. No. You can't put him to work now. He's much too young. Definitely not. He agreed that I'm the one in charge of developmental training. Of course, I'm aware of the danger. I'll get back to you tomorrow. We're leaving in ten minutes. We'd better get moving. Why do I have to go? You don't need to see me. I'm sorry. 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 i I wish all kinds of things. Everybody has wishes. Say, why don't we play a game? Why don't we see if we can guess what other people are wishing? You said I'm not supposed to. Not supposed to what? You know about the voices. All right, it's okay, Teddy. You can say whatever you want. How about that big fat man over there? Expensive clothes, smart briefcase... He looks like the president of a big company. No, he isn't. Well, then I bet he wishes he was the president of a big company. He wishes he was at home playing with his electric trains. How do you know all that? I don't know. The pilot. I bet she can't tell me what's on his mind. He's thinking about a lady. And she isn't wearing any clothes. Teddy, and you can't even see the pilot. I don't want to play this game. How about your mother? Can you tell me what Margie's thinking about? I don't know. Too far away. I don't know. I don't want to play anymore. Sure, sure. That's okay, Summer. Don't get upset. It's only a game. Please, Daddy. I just want to look out the window. I don't want to play. You'll see. We'll have lots of fun in Ottawa. And you'll be a big help to your daddy, right? Sure, Daddy. I'm okay. It's you and me against the world, kid. You and me against the world. Well, it's, uh, getting late. Uh, can I pour you one for the road, Frank? Oh, no, no, no. I have to be up at 0700, you know. Uh, by the way, I'd like to say that a lot of the ideas we discussed tonight should impress the minister. He's a tough old goat, but if you could convince him about the task... Oh, please, no more, Gordon. We can discuss the details by phone. Well, uh, Teddy, I hope you didn't mind, uh, 
company of a pompous old man for a few hours. No, sir. But next time, I want to talk to you a little more. Introduce you to my kids. I'd like that, sir. <clears throat> You're a good boy, Teddy. You'll get along fine. Well, I better be on the road. I've enjoyed this, Frank. I really have. Goodbye, Teddy. Goodbye, sir. That's that. It would work out all right. Hey, what are you doing? You're supposed to go to bed. I just want to watch a little TV. All right, but just for a while. Well, what'd you think of him, Teddy? I said, what'd you think of Mr. Ballard? He's okay. Well, he certainly seemed to like you. And it's always hard to tell what's going on in his mind. You think he'll get me the job? I don't know. But come on, Teddy, you're pretty good at guessing these things. What do you think's on his mind? I said I don't know. Now don't play around, Teddy. Just tell me what he was thinking about all night. Don't be mad at me. I'm not mad at you, Teddy. I just want you to tell me what Ballard is going to do about that job. I know you can do it. You do it to your mother, to your, to my sister-in-law, on, on the airplane. You do it all the time, don't you? Now tell me. I don't know. I don't know. Leave me alone. Teddy, tell me right now. Why the hell do you think I brought you here? You hate me. You hate me. You just want to push me around. You Damn it, just... tell me. I'm not. I'm not crazy. I'm not. Teddy, I'm... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to do it, son. It just everything seems to be piling up on me. You've got to understand, Teddy. Look, over there, it's a roller coaster. Would you like to go on the roller coaster? I guess so. You aren't really having a very good time, are you, Teddy? No, ma'am. I guess I'm not. People come here to be with each other and have lots of fun. I don't like it. They make too much noise. Some people like the noise and the shouting. That isn't what you mean, is it? No. It's the other kind of noise, the voices. It's all these people. They're unhappy and they're angry all the time. It goes on and on all the time and it makes me scared of all the noise they make and I hear them but I can't make it stop all the voices and they go on and on and on. Teddy, Teddy. I'm sorry, Doctor. I, I want to go home. Teddy, wait. Now, listen to what I'm saying. They're unhappy because even in a big crowd like this, they're all alone. I'm alone all the time. No, you aren't, Teddy. You aren't. I'm here, and, and there are others, lots of others. And we are all just like you. Mommy says there's nobody else like me. She doesn't understand because she can't hear the voices the way that we can. I don't want to hear them. Maybe not now, but you will one day. You're just like the others. You don't understand. You you just want me to believe what you say. You want me to do things, but you don't know what I hear. Teddy, listen. <laughs> listen. Listen. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Hey. Can, can hear you inside. What is it like, Teddy? Warm and yellow like the sun. Yeah, that's what it's really like. When you get older, you'll be able to talk to me like that. And you won't ever be lonely. You never did that before in the office. When you grow up, you'll be able to do that. You'll be able to let people inside. Or make your thoughts cloudy. You'll be able to listen to the whole world. Or else have, a, have as much quiet as you want. The man in Ottawa, he was like that. Like trying to look through a cloud. Teddy, I don't want you to see him again. I didn't like him. But Daddy says we'll be seeing him lots of times. 
Daddy was mad at me and he hit me. I don't understand. Teddy, it's all right. I know all about this. I don't want to hear any voices. They scare me. And Daddy's mad at me. And Mommy says I'm sick. And you're supposed to cure me. There's nothing wrong with you when you grow up. I'm scared when I grow up. I'll be scared all the time. Mommy and Daddy are scared. And I think the man and I were scared. Listen. Careful. You can't help being what you are, and you aren't the only one. People like us have been here a long time, and sometimes, when people found out about us, they called us witches and did terrible things to us. Now, Mr. Buffett is afraid. He's afraid. That's what... That's what's going to happen again. He wants us to take over power because he thinks that will stop us. I don't understand. You will one day. But keep away from that. He wants you to do things for him here. Then to meet your father takes you to see him again. I don't want to go. You have to make your parents think you don't hear the voices anymore. I'll try. Hello, Sam? Yes, I know it's late. Don't laugh at me. You're the one who started all the trouble with Teddy. It certainly is my business, and I'm telling you for the last time, you're making a mistake with him. Oh, I'm not running the organization. But I'm supposed to be a psychiatrist, and I tell you, the boy's under far too much pressure. You've only met him a couple of times, and I've seen him in one of his panics. He's more powerful than any of us. God knows what could happen. Please, I'm begging you. For the boy's sake. Leave him alone. Damn fool. But look at what he can do for us. Can't be serious, Gordon. Why not? You make him worse. Do you really care about Teddy or the neighbors? Dr. Wright says he's emotionally disturbed. Whatever you call it, Teddy has some kind of, of, of talent. Imagine the possibilities. But it only makes him unhappy. Dollar thinks we've got a disturbed kid. He says he knows a school where Teddy can get special help. It's none of his business, Gordon. Well, he's got a problem kid of his own. He likes Teddy. Dr. Rice says he'll be okay. You know just... damn well you're sick of him hanging around the house all the time. I tell you, we have to move to Ottawa. It's the best oh, opportunity I've had in years. I don't no want to, to go. Anymore. We should go, go in there. Go to bed. Go mine. I don't Please want to go. go. I'm not people. going to no go. I hate all of you. Away. Teddy, come back. Teddy, come back. Come back here. Come back here. Hey, you all right? You are going to put me in jail. Uh, it's just, you shouldn't be out so late. Now, where do you live? I am not going home. Your parents beat you or something? You tell me where you live, and I'll see they don't do it again. Me so I want to go. What kind of screwy kid are you? Teddy. Teddy. Dr. Rice. Who are you talking to? Wait a minute, officer. Wait. It's all right. I know the boy. I'm a friend of his. Ah, screwy kid. What's he doing up at this hour? Go away, Dr. Rice. Don't worry, officer. I'll see that he gets home. No, I am not going home. Calm down, Teddy. I am not going back there. They want to catch me, but I won't let them catch me and put me away with the crazy people. 
Daddy, stop it. You're hurting my head. have just heard Teddy by Stephen Fragrant. Featured in the title role was Maxine Miller, with Nancy Kerr as Margie and Frank Perry as Gordon. You heard Maggie Morris as Beth and Jennifer Phipps as Dr. Emma Rice. Frank Ballard was played by John Granite, and the policeman was John Stocker. The recording engineer was David Hoyle, with sound effect by Matt Wilcott, and the production assistant was Nancy McElveen. Teddy was produced and directed in Toronto by Peter Boretsky. The executive producer for Nightfall is Bill Howell. And now, here is a final word from your host. Hello again. Next week on Nightfall, the central character has trouble arriving at a vital decision. So we'll all have to do what we can to help him make up his mind. You were going to kill yourself. What's it to you? Let's just say I'm concerned about suicide. Oh, I get it. You're some kind of creature. Next you're going to tell me, I know how you feel. Well, you don't, see? Oh? Well, I suppose you could say I'm something of an evangelist. Yes, but not quite what you expect. In fact, I was on my way to the meeting. Care to come? The Kermit. The Thinking Room. Introducing writer Tim Wynne Jones on this grave ether. And starring Alan Fawcett with Rosemary Radcliffe, Henry Raymer, and Richard Donner. Dream. You are falling. Lost in the listening distance. As dark 
locks in. <laughs> Nightfall. Good evening. Tonight you're all invited to join a special club. But perhaps we'd better warn you that you may feel inclined to terminate your membership at any time. The play, a first for this medium by award-winning novelist Tim Wynne Jones, is called The Thinking Room. <laughs> <laughs> 